The safety recall detailed in this program involves 1991 and 1992 model year Dodge Ram pickup trucks equipped with a 5.9 liter intercooled turbo diesel engine and an injection pump date coded 163 through 169. The recall also applies to 1991, 1992 and 1993 Ram pickup trucks with a warranty service replacement injection pump that was installed through May 11, 1993. On these vehicles, the internal fuel injection pump fulcrum lever pin may break, causing a loss of throttle control. To correct this condition, the fuel injection pump must be replaced if the vehicle is equipped with one of the affected original equipment or warranty replacement injection pumps. For repair of affected vehicles, there are two parts packages involved in this recall. One for vehicles with a manual transmission and one for vehicles with an automatic transmission. To determine if the recall service is required, the fuel injection pump data plate on all involved vehicles must first be inspected. To do this, locate the data plate on the lower outboard side of the pump body and inspect the data plate for the presence of an infinity symbol as shown here. The presence of this infinity symbol indicates that the pump has already been serviced and no further action is required. If an infinity symbol is not present, inspect the date code highlighted here to determine if it is 163 through 169. All pumps with no infinity symbol that have a date code of 163 through 169 must be replaced. As mentioned earlier, some vehicles may be equipped with a warranty replacement pump. These pumps will carry a Mopar remanufactured data tag. Again, if an infinity symbol is present on the Mopar data tag, no further action is required. However, if the infinity symbol is not on the Mopar data tag, you must inspect the date codes on the pump data plate by removing one of the rivets on the Mopar tag and rotating the tag to expose the pump data plate. If the date codes on the data plate are any number from 163 through 169, the fuel injection pump must be replaced. If the date code is not 163 through 169, no further action is required. In this case, place a daub of RTV sealer behind the Mopar data tag and reposition the tag over the data plates. Before replacing the fuel injection pump, you should be aware that the fuel pressure on these vehicles could be as high as 59,000 kPa or 8,000 psi, which could cause serious bodily harm. Therefore, it is important that you wear safety goggles and adequate protective clothing and you do not allow any contact with fuel spray when bleeding any high pressure lines. Also, it is critical to follow the service procedures exactly as they are detailed to avoid personal injury or damage to the vehicle. Also, a number of special tools will be required to properly perform this service procedure. In order of use, these tools include an injector fuel line crowfoot, such as MAC number CHBM-17, MATCO number WCFS-17M, or snap-on number FRHM-17, an injector fuel line socket, such as MAC number COBR-17, MATCO WCFM-1517, or snap-on number FRXM-17 an injection pump drive gear T-bar puller, such as Cummins number ST647, Miller number L4407A, or snap-on number CG606BB, a 13 millimeter offset wrench for the lower inboard pump mounting nut, such as Cummins number 3377198, or snap-on number SP144, a barring tool such as Cummins number 3377371, Miller number 7471A, or snap-on number SP371, and an optical tachometer such as Cummins number 3377462, 
or snap-on number MT-139. The first part of this program will detail the procedure for removing the fuel injection pump. With the ignition key in the off position, disconnect the negative battery cable. To ensure customer satisfaction, remember to record all radio settings before disconnecting the battery and to reset the radio after completing the service. Next, disconnect the throttle linkage at the pump lever ball stud. Now remove the throttle return springs and remove the throttle linkage bracket and set it aside for working access. When performing this step, do not remove the pump control lever from the pump because it is indexed to the shaft during pump calibration. Now, remove the air fuel control tube. When removing this tube or any other fuel tube during this procedure, be careful not to bend any of the tubes. Next, remove the low pressure supply line that runs from the separator filter to the front of the pump. Now, disconnect the fuel drain manifold line at the rear of the pump. Next, remove the hold down clamp bolt that retains the line. The clamp is located behind the pump high pressure lines. Now, disconnect the two wires to the fuel shutoff valve. Disconnect the wire to the KSB solenoid. And for vehicles with an automatic transmission, disconnect the throttle position sensor electrical connector. Next, disconnect the six high pressure lines at the rear of the pump using an injector fuel line crowfoot tool or injector socket. Be sure to note each fuel line to pump outlet location to assure that the lines are properly installed to the new pump. Now remove the oil dipstick and the top engine cover. Next, remove the four bracket bolts at the top of the manifold holding the front and rear fuel bundles. Then disconnect the fuel tubes from injectors using the injector fuel line socket. After disconnecting the fuel tubes at the injectors, remove the fuel bundle assembly for injectors 1, 2, and 3. Next, swing the rear fuel bundle down to gain additional clearance at the rear of the pump. Now remove the top two bolts and the bottom bolt from the pump support bracket. Then loosen the remaining bolt and swing the bracket rearward. The bottom bolt and pivot bolt are hidden below and behind the power steering pump. Now remove the oil filler bracket bolt and unscrew the filler tube from its base. For visual access, the upper radiator hose has been removed. After removing the filler tube, unscrew the filler tube base from the pump gear housing cover.